Hello, everybody. Welcome back to The Very Good Show. This is episode two of The Very Good Show. The episode is also very good. It is very good because of my very special guest today. Everyone watching at home, please give a warm welcome to John Black of Ford Atlantic. How are you doing today, John? Slash Ford Atlantic, uh, sir. <laughs> I'm doing great, man. Thanks for having me. I'm excited about chatting and just seeing, what, seeing where the conversation goes. Of course, of course. Now... Uh, I think it's only fair, before we get started, I think it's only fair seeing as how with the first episode with Ratlobber, most people that watch my channel were already familiar with who Ratlobber is, who he was, so to speak. Um, but I don't know if I can say the same thing for, for you. So just before we get started, why don't you tell us, all those lovely people watching at home, why don't you tell them who and what is Ford Atlantic? Who is the person I'm talking to right now? <laughs> yeah, dude. No. So yeah, uh, my name's John. I, I live in or Portland, Oregon. I am um, a musician, and Ford Atlantic is was is my one of my projects um, musically. That I just sort of <clears throat> wanted to have something that explored sound and different things because I, I, mm -hmm. I started in songwriting. Um, and so I started Ford Atlantic as a kind of a side thing, but then it r quickly took over um, and became kind of the main focus. Uh, and a lot of a lot of fortunate stuff that happened on TV with TV and film. Mm -hmm. I had a bunch of songs on TV, like uh, you know, not to brag or anything. <laughs> yeah, no, but it was like it's just one of those things where you never really. I didn't know that was going to happen uh, when I started the project. I, I don't know if that ever would 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 happen though if it, if it was like oh yeah i'm gonna do this just to do this and it would be whatever but um yeah so my, yeah that's pretty much me i'm just a musician uh i'm a, a dad a husband a soccer fan a, a gamer uh but the biggest thing that i am i guess most in as far as my identity would be music for sure music but uh don't don't let that fool you everyone like he said he is a husband dad soccer fan and most importantly a gamer so uh, don't let the musician part fool you, but uh, real quick, uh, just for those especially unfamiliar, I'll, I'll play a little bit, uh, a brief snippet of one of your songs here for, once again, the lovely, lovely people watching at home. I'm going to leave a brief few seconds of silence there. what song to use later but um <laughs> so how would you describe the genre of music you create like the song i just played i've, I've always considered it now i should preface this by everyone everyone you lovely people watching at home that i've said that for the fourth time it, it's still true <laughs> though you lovely people watching at home I, except i'm a, one person except that one person you know who you are um <laughs> I've, I should preface this whole thing by saying I'm a big fan of Ford Atlantic. I'm a big fan of John's work here. Um, have been for quite a few years. One Easily some of my favorite music uh, probably of all time. And I'm not saying that just to just to, to humble the guest. I'm saying that because I really like <laughs> this guy's music. All right. Yeah, so, thank you, dude. I appreciate that. <laughs> of course, of course. I've always considered it kind of like alternative folk almost but i'm not an expert it's your it's your creation it's your music how would you describe the genre of music you write the music you create yeah that's a great question i i always for this like kind of like the quick like the overview i'm always like it's very much lives in the indie rock indie folk world mm -hmm. um but I, but i always you know i can break that down like so much more just because uh, I, I, there was the last record we did, Shadow Shaker Volume One. My mm -hmm. my idea behind it, my vision behind it, was to do like Tom Petty and Arcade Fire got in a time machine and rode their bikes <laughs> to an arcade and made an album afterwards. And so, like that was kind of like it, it only came out on cassette or whatever. But like those were the, that, that's kind of like just that world of American music and indie rock and explosive stuff and, and melody. I, I 
I live all over that place, um, Fort Atlantic does specifically. And it's, um, yeah, I, but mainly just kind of the quick, the quick and easy answer is very much in the indie rock, indie folk world. Um, we don't, we don't like quick and easy answers on the show. We don't do quickie. <laughs> we don't do that sort of thing here. So, so yeah, don't worry. That, that's true. Yeah, no, but I think that's, that's kind of, that's been the, the direction for a while and will continue to be the direction. And I just, uh, yeah, I remember specifically seeing Tom Petty, uh, like many years ago, obviously before he died, uh, right. it'd be weird if I <laughs> saw him after he died. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I just remember thinking like, gosh, this would be so cool if there was a bunch of really crazy synthesizers and whatever and noise. And, and, I, and I just, and you know, he did, he, uh, after that. Tom Petty did get up to some crazy synthesizer stuff at certain points in his career, but Oh, very much so. Very much he so. He was definitely uh, an experimentalist. I saw I saw Tom Petty as well a couple years. I think just a year or two before he died, actually. He came to my state, and uh, that was one of the best concerts I ever went to. So I, I don't... Uh, I don't blame you at all for taking inspiration from the guy. He was, he was incredible. <laughs> no, he's like, yeah, totally. I, I just... I, 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 what he's kind of, he was the first like artist that I was, I don't want to say like sad because yeah, it's obviously sad when someone dies, but like, it was very, like he was one of those guys that was super meaning, like super important and impactful yeah. for, for how I made music. And I just remember like, like I was the first person everybody texted because <laughs> they just <laughs> knew how much of a fan I was. <laughs> and, um, and I was like, yes, I know, I know it's not looking good, blah, blah, blah. But uh, yeah, so Tom Petty, I love that stuff. Um, I mean, it's definitely in that the war on drugs world as well, as well, right? Um, which is which is a awesome. I mean, let's talk about a Springsteen with synthesizers. I feel like, um, right? But yeah, so that that kind of modern genre, Americana, that, modern Americana. Yeah, that works for me too. <laughs> <laughs> I like that phrase. I'm gonna write that down. That sounds cool. Yeah, that's a good one. Or maybe we could even take it like to a next, like the next level. Like we could call it post Americana. Like it's Neo like you know, Americana. Post <laughs> rock, post punk. <laughs> Just add the word post on anything and it becomes, yeah, it, it becomes artsy. <laughs> yeah. Post norm core, all of this stuff. <laughs> uh, post Americana core. There we go. <laughs> I uh, love it. Everyone, Ford Atlantic here is a musician that makes post Americana core music. If you're not familiar with the genre, clearly you're a fake fan of the channel. Yeah. If you where, don't, where have you been? Honestly, honestly, where have you been if you don't know it, Post Americana Core? If you don't have at least three Spotify playlists dedicated to Post Americana Core, close out this uh, video right now. Close out the stream. Close out everything. It's over. Get out of here. <laughs> um. But yeah, post Americana core. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Now, yeah, I love it. <laughs> uh, you mentioned earlier uh, when you were introducing yourself that you had some some music on on TV, some music in movies, and I think uh, I think for anyone that is familiar with you, anyone that's watching that that knows who Ford Atlantic is, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I think the most notable example of this was. Uh, the song let your heart hold fast being used in an episode of how i met your mother now i love that song i love the show i was wondering how did the process of your song being used in that episode go like did a lawyer from cbs just call you one day and say hey john so we've got a show like how did how did that go <laughs> yeah it's it was crazy <laughs> to, uh, just to say the least but I um, at the time was on a like a record label, mm -hmm. and that record label had worked with a licensing, like a licensing agent, right? So like right. these people, their job is to like say, oh yeah, here's you're looking for this kind of song. Here's what we have, um, and we somehow the people from how the the music supervisor from How I Met Your Mother, who uh, his name's. Andy, uh, and he did an amazing job. Like I love, like that show. It was one of the shows. This one of the, like I loved that show. Mm -hmm. I had you know, and they just would always be like, oh man, it'd be super cool to have a song on there. Like you know, oh, lo and behold, it happened. <laughs> gee, how fortune favors you. <laughs> I 
but yeah, so like essentially they, they send it to a the licensing people and the record label and they both work together in tandem to kind of get the songs to people and uh, and often um they'll they'll clear like what's the what's called clearing they'll just get permission to to do like three or four songs right and uh they'll throw these songs in there like different artists and just kind of get a feel for the edit and, and what works see how well it and, meshes into the episode yeah exactly and um this was I had actually lost um, out to Cat Stevens uh, in a previous season. Right. <laughs> so, like, right. this was this was the second time I was up for something in, in How I Met Your Mother, and um, yeah, and so that was it. Like, I just remember I was kind of I was in San Francisco, and I was kind of I was about to literally about to go walk on stage and play to like twenty people, and just right. <laughs> kind of kind of feeling like, gosh, I don't even know if this is what am I doing. And then all of a sudden the phone rings and it's the label and they're like, hey, guess what? Fun fun fact, this is going to happen next week. <laughs> and, oh, uh, right. You did I, just get a call saying, hey, John, <laughs> we've got a show. Yeah. But I, I remember asking like specifically like, okay, well, yeah, I, this has happened before. I've had songs that are, you know, into the process, but then they don't make it at the mm -hmm. last second. And I was like, well, what's the like, I go, well, what am I? And I knew that I had lost one to Cat Stevens earlier and rightfully so. Uh, and I was like, all right, well, like, who else is up for this? And they're like, oh, no one. It's just you. There's only two songs, and they're both yours. And I was like, oh, so this is really going to happen. This is happening. This is real. Yeah. Um, so that was that was that whole experience. And it was just really surreal. Like, I had, I'd I had, I'd I'd had music. Yeah, I had music on, on shows before. And and it was really cool. And it's very satisfying. And, and it makes – it feels – great actually to have someone like recognize what you do and want to want to incorporate it into what they're making and, but and you, you kind of expected like what was the band the fray like they had that yeah. phrase anatomy moment right oh yeah and like whenever you for like the first one came i was like all right that's it We're, this is the next thing i know i'll play three thousand people and blah 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 but, but it never it never you know those things never really happened that you know they just kind of used the music and it was cool and i got a nice payday and oh yeah um, i can continue continue to work but the how i met your mother thing was not so i didn't expect the reaction i just was like oh this is cool you know yeah. i'm gonna be able to to uh, afford to go fly somewhere and play more shows or whatever it's, but all, then it's it, all about it, the it, grind it's all about moving forward <laughs> yeah and, but then all of a sudden it it exploded I knew within 24 hours that something special was happening with it. And uh, I feel to this day, I still am confused. <laughs> not, like confused. it's just still such a weird, not confused, but just, just like such a weird experience just to, to, I don't know. You have like these things you make and then all of a sudden someone wants to use it. Right. And they make something with it and it's really cool and you're excited about it. And then all of the people that are in there just sort of like fall into what you're making and, it just seemed to happen like almost over overnight, like literally overnight. Uh, and I was not prepared for it. No one was prepared for it. So, uh, but it was like, it's super, it's super cool. Right, <laughs> there's right. no, there's no getting around that. Like I'm really, really, uh, thankful for it. I'm, I, uh, I'd imagine, I mean, it can, having a show that's broadcast nationally want to like such a good show at that, uh, not as good as a very good show, but you get what I mean. Uh, having such right. a good show, <laughs> uh, want to use something you create, like they say, "Hey, this is good. Let's use this. This fits what we want to do." I, I, I can't imagine. It's kind of like uh, that time I got a musician I really like to come on my show, but that's a different story. <laughs> right? Yes, of course, of course. Um, uh, we want, <laughs> but no, that's, yeah, it is really, it's super, it's just really gratifying. I think like when you create something, you're always afraid of, at least for me, I'll speak for myself, but like making something and then putting it out into the world, there's an element you're supposed to be like, oh, I don't care. But secretly deep down, every artist cares very, very much about whether or not. I, I'm like not it. a big fan of the <laughs> faux stoicism. When Whenever yeah. something cool happened, I want to celebrate it, you know? If I had yeah. if I had one of my YouTube videos featured on How I Met Your Mother or something, I'd be I'd be screaming it from the rooftops. I'd go to I'd go to the top of a news building and I'd scream, guys, guess what just <laughs> happened? You know? So so I don't I don't 
I don't buy into the whole fake stoicism thing at all. I think yeah. we should all be happy for things that that happen to us because uh, good things are good. You know, what's the point in pretending they're not good? I don't get it. Yeah, we should celebrate our wins, man. I, I think that's taken me a long time to actually not not with just this song, but just in general. Like, you know, you you always you can have that mentality, and, and which I have had in the past of like, oh well. That's great and all, but there's something else. All right. right, blah blah blah. And but that that moment was just sort of like, this happens. This is happening, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna. I literally put a suit on because the character put suit like wore a suit. I put a suit on, and my friend put a suit on, and we went down to the pub, and we had some beers, and we just like laughed about the whole thing in a good way, like it celebrated it, right. And then, you know, a few days later, I was back to work and working on things and figuring out what was next. But it, it's definitely, I don't know. It's just like so weird to think about that that show means so much to so many people, including myself. And and, and I'm a part of it. I'm a part of right. that, that narrative somehow. And that's like really mind blowing to me still. And it's been like, what, 10 years, maybe seven years? Going, going on 10, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, it's it's crazy, but I, you know, I'm grateful, man. My door, my doors are still very much open because of it, and I am um, just excited about. I feel like I won, you know. Like I feel right. like I just retire. I guess. I mean, hey, I'm not going to stop you. You had a show. You had a, <laughs> a nationally broadcast show. Use your song. You know, that's why I'm going to give up. <laughs> yeah. Um, so. Uh, like I said, the song used, and I'll, I'll play a little snippet of it here as well. Not too long, because uh, I believe the song is still owned by your record label, so I don't want to. I don't want to get hit with a copyright claim. I'll play a little bit of it. That's good enough. Um, uh, the song "Let Your Heart Hold Fast" was used in the show, and that might be your most well-known song, might arguably so. But what would you say is your favorite song you've written? The one you're most proud of? Ooh, um, wow. Yeah, it's kind Let's of a big see. question. Don't worry, take your time. <laughs> I I agree with you. That is hands down the most like the song that everybody's familiar with, right? Mm-hmm. That you know, so like, and that's again amazing and i'm incredibly grateful for it but as far as like my favorite song i've ever written or there's this i think there's the one that one of them that comes to mind specifically is a song called bathed in sunlight and it's on the you know shadow shaker volume one right and it's a song that i've written about a gentleman i I lived in alabama for six years and uh before moving out to the west coast uh with, with my wife and there i'd gotten involved with a, a friend's organization it's called equal justice initiative and it, you know like they made a movie about the guy's life not my not my friend but the the brian stevenson is his name the guy who started the foundation right and they work to get people out of off of death row like, that are wrongfully you know wrongfully put there right and I, I, when and i'd followed a story through that and found out that you know, his name's Anthony Ray Hubbard. He, he, they like, they let him out. Like he got off of death row and like yeah. walked free. And I just remember being like so moved by that. So I went and wrote a song. Um, and you know, that's just what I do. Like I just go, <laughs> I write a song and that's, uh, and, and I recorded it and we did it and I put it out and I, and I made this video for it that I was really proud of. And that mm-hmm. all of a sudden, like it was featured on an NPR blog. And then it went from there all throughout the whole social justice world. Yeah. Um, and, and, and hit the desks and emails of some very like important people in that world that I wasn't like, you know, I just was wanting to write a song about something that moved me, right? you know, <laughs> and all of a sudden these things, you know, it just takes, again, it took on a little bit of life of its own, but I'm just really proud of that song. And I feel like, um, yeah, I don't know. I actually still don't know if he's heard it though. If, if 
Mr. Hubbard's heard it, but uh, I hope he has, and and if I hope to meet him one day too, that'd just be to give him a give him a hug, and say <laughs> right? Thank you, for, thank you and sorry, <laughs> you know. Thank you and sorry, both of those. No, I uh, yeah, that's uh, of course I know the song. I didn't know uh, all that backstory for it, and I I can't say I can't say I uh how do, how do i say it i can't say i really blame you for like being moved by such a thing because it's a group of people coming together with the sole purpose of wanting to save lives that deserve to yeah. be saved and they succeeded and that's that's such a, a powerful moving just concept i i can see why you'd want why anyone would want to create a piece of art uh based on something like that something as moving as that um and the fact that your song ended up, the fact that the song ended up uh, having a much bigger ripple than you expected it to, I think that's one of the most beautiful things about about creating art in general. And that no one sets out to, whenever they want to make a piece of art, whenever they want to write a song, make a movie, uh, uh, paint a picture, anything like that, whenever they want to do that, they don't set out to change the world. They set out to make a piece of art, something. Yeah something for them ultimately at the end of the day maybe other people like it that's fine if i write a song i write it because i've got a subject in mind i want to write about it that's for me if i record it one day bam there you go i don't expect that song to ripple throughout the world and cause changes and and as you say land in the desks land on the desks of important people i just set out to create a piece of art but right. that's the beauty of it is that if it's truly art, it never ends up just being a piece of art. It's going to create ripples like that. And I think that's, I think that's neat. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I know. I love that. And I think it's, I've, I've done, yeah, I, it's one of those things where you just don't, you don't plan on it and purposely you don't plan on it. All you plan on is creating something. And for me, I want to create something beautiful. I want to tell a narrative and I want to put it into the world. And a lot of that is sometimes selfish in the fact of like, I'm putting these little buoys out in the ocean to let people know that one, I'm not alone or to let them know they're not alone and right. in hopes to know that I'm not alone, <laughs> right. you know, stuff like, but yeah, so that's, you know, you just, that's, that's sometimes a little bit difficult when, when it comes to, uh, I have been asked to write specifically for like, an ad or a tv show or a yeah. movie or whatever and and none of that stuff has ever um found you know never gotten selected for the whatever the the you know they ask like 20 people to write a song so it's like yeah but none of that stuff has ever you know happened uh it's always been the things that that i feel like are coming from a place of authenticity and my right. heart and where i am at the moment and so yeah it's you just never know what's going to happen and and that's yeah i mean i can't i can't stop making music that's the one thing i've learned is <laughs> you know if i were to make to make music for you know with with something in mind like as far as like some sort of success in mind like i just don't see that working but right. i'm i just have to make songs <laughs> and so i do it and i'm always kind of like shocked whenever you know, if uh, that's like, what, how do you, who, how did you find out about me? And right. you know, like that kind of stuff. But yeah, it, it's, it's, it's super interesting to kind of be, to, to understand the philosophy of creating, I guess it's something that I read about and try to understand as well. And mm -hmm. how to kind of clear your ego out of the way and, <laughs> and, and, and be honest. And that's not an easy, an easy task at all honesty is is everything when it comes to creating anything of any kind not just music i yeah. think I, I was just gonna say i think the artist that sets out to create something to impress or with a very specific goal of success in mind isn't making art that is a product now there's nothing it's wrong with that specifically but it's not gonna have the same like you said it's not gonna have the same authenticity as someone that wants to create just for the sake of creating. Yeah, totally, man. It's, it's that's the truth. And and like I, I, I was working with this guy who works with like artists who kind of walks through because I I was going through a kind of a season of, of very close to burning out. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, and we were, you know, he's a, like a counselor that works with artists and specifically burnout. And we were talking about um, how it's the things that you don't plan on. And exactly. it's, it's, the, it's just that you make something because you have to and you want to. And then all of a sudden, that's the thing that happens. Not the, I've got a great idea for a YouTube video or a great idea yeah. for a song or whatever. Like, I'm going to write this specifically for this person in this industry. And blah, blah, blah. it's like, yeah, man, just like be honest and, and make something that's that that that's true to you. That's all there is to it. And I think it's funny. Me and I think me and Ratlobber, Ratlobber and I, for you, uh, for you grammar heads yeah. out there, um, I think Ratlobber and I talked about something similar in, uh, if not the last episode of the show, then maybe on one of my streams, how with all forms of art, there's always an influx of people at basically any given time that want to participate in the creation of some kind of art but not because they want to create art but because they want to be known for the creation of art they want to be the next big songwriter they want to be mm-hmm. the next big i think the example rat Lobber and i used was with internet horror everyone wants to be the next big developer of a scary indie game that markiplier plays you know <laughs> um yes so it's it's kind of interesting that uh Two episodes in a row have gone, and we've discussed similar concepts. But it's a fascinating concept, I think. It's a, it's a very interesting topic that I think a lot can be said about. So you know, nothing wrong there. Yeah. No, I totally agree. And I think even in the gaming space, I look about. I think about my favorite games that are these little. Some of my favorite games, at least. This are, is where we get into the Ford Atlantic being a gamer part of the of the episode, <laughs> yeah. as stated earlier. <laughs> yeah, but I just I think about like the the people the smaller little studios that are making games like celeste is one of my favorite games i just that game was it felt i'm not sure so i played it to play oh man but it had this beautiful <laughs> narrative <laughs> it's such a great game it's a very much a platformer and kind of in the um was aura and the will of the wisps and uh whatever that kind of vibe mm-hmm. right and so it's celeste is if you have a switch it's like i, I, do. I someone I do. told me to play it and I literally sat down on a plane and the next thing I knew I landed and I was like, this game is amazing. Uh, but they have a really beautiful narrative about um, finding yourself and, and wrestling with who you are and, mm-hmm. and mental health. And like, and these are things that aren't like, the, that's not like a triple A thing, right? Like, you know, right. there's no explosions and huge machine guns. It's just a narrative and a story and a journey about self-discovery and i I just remember just playing it not not to say there's anything wrong with explosions and big machine guns we're big we're real explosion heads on this show (laughs) yeah lots of we need all of the bombs and all of them uh, all the guns all of the tnt blocks in the minecraft world (laughs) all of them all of them but I, that my entire server realm realm minecraft realm is only tnt blocks so naturally that's that's the only way to play the game that's how much I love to freak out computers, but but that's the thing. Like the, that's how much we love explosions Annapurna. on this show. Annapurna is another developer, like Studio, and they just always do interesting things with narrative, and 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 these are the things that are small studios are taking risks on and trying something because they can afford to. They can afford to, and they want to, and they want to change essentially the perception of video games as entertainment to maybe, uh, not maybe, because I believe they are, but video games as art. Uh, There's definitely know, a, uh, an argument to be made for video games being art. I I hesitate to call the entire concept of a video game art because there's a lot, there are, I, I'd go as far as to say a vast majority of video games that have been created are most definitely not art. <laughs> but there are definitely <laughs> yes. are games that support that argument that video games can be art um right like there's this game i like uh called mist old uh 90s puzzle game that is that recently that game is art so yeah yeah i think uh there's definitely an argument to be made so i totally i totally get what you're what you're saying there uh can we set can we call this an official uh advertisement for celeste like can i get the developers to pay me for this Oh my gosh, just, I mean, I'll email I, if, them. 
Yes, you should. <laughs> I don't know if they can pay you, but if in the email, just say, John says, great work, high five. Exactly, we'll- <laughs> exactly. Uh, Ford Atlantic likes your game. I like money. Well, Let's make this happen. Yeah. <laughs> It'll be great. No, it's, It'll such be great. A great it's such a great game. I'll, uh, you said it's on Switch? This is the, Yeah, uh, Switch. It's on all the consoles, so... This is your official advertisement. Go play Celeste on Switch. Uh, this isn't coming from me. This is coming from from John here. So if you end up not liking the game, you know who to blame. Yeah. Not me. Come at me, dude. Seriously, come at me. But no one will because everyone <laughs> I've talked to loves this game. <laughs> well, you heard it here first. You heard it here first. Uh, the gamer Ford Atlantic, most known for being a gamer, as he said earlier. Uh, <laughs> Celeste is a good game. Go check it out. Yeah. Um... <laughs> So, so, <clears throat> excuse me, we've uh, kind of branched off from the music talk, and that, that's all well and good, but I had one, one question, one last question I wanted to, to ask you about, about music that perhaps I should have asked earlier on in the episode, but that's all right, that's all right. Uh, who or what, and I do say or what because, you know, it's not necessarily a person, inspired you to start writing music? Oh, man, that is a great question question it was i'm sure um, that you've never heard before ever (laughs) no i definitely have like i i just but it's such a it's a it's a hard question to answer like i think about it my dad taught me to play taught me some chords right and like and that was it and i just started playing from there and then um me and some friends from the youth group at the baptist church in outside of atlanta we started like <laughs> a loud a loud smashing pumpkins ripoff band and wow. which was so which was awesome. so much fun it was so much fun i don't suppose and, any recordings um, from that band still exist do they um yes that's the real ford atlantic <laughs> lost media yeah that is the lost media no i have a cassette of it still and uh but it was fun right and that's like i just remember it was never something that I was like, I don't know. I just, I remember one day I figured out a song on mm-hmm. the, like a song that I'd like. So I could, I could hear, I heard it and I figured out how to play it. And then after that, it was like, well, I wonder if I can do my own stuff. Right. And, and so it really is just something that I just naturally fell into, you know, and some people love to just play guitar and love to I, you know, I don't know. They just, yeah, they just love to make music and play piano. But, and then there's, there's other people when well, no, those people are amazing. And then there's other people like me that can't stop at just playing. You have to sort of see how you can put your life into it. And the, the uh, instrument is an extension of self. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Very much. Brian Eno said the studio is an extension, uh, an instrument as well. It's like, <laughs> but those kind of things, man, like I, I, I that was, that was really it i mean it just sort of fell into fell into place and it's not surprising like i've always been a person that sees something and says oh that's really cool what if we did this and you know tried it that way or something and and that's 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 just always what if we did it this completely different way let's see if that works a little bit better all right yeah let's give that a shot <laughs> no that one failed okay let's try it again but <laughs> that's yeah, that's kind of the the that's been my personality for so forever and and i'm looking back on it as a like seeing myself as a kid making my own little bike paths in my backyard it wasn't like okay here's just like one ramp it's like what if we did this ramp doing this and right. then we go get a video camera and we shoot what was i think in sixth grade i made a and a, a video based off a bicycle BMX stunt video based off of the Odyssey. Uh, <laughs> so like, that what a concept has, has gone away. Uh, but, gone away like it's lost. Thing. It's gone. Oh, it's gone forever. Yeah, unfortunate. <laughs> Very unfortunate. That is the for, lost for, media yeah. <laughs> holy grail right there. <laughs> but that's like you know that's the thing. It's I've, it's never been. I've never been. I don't want to say satisfied because I am satisfied, but I'm always just curious. Like what? That's a happen? better way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, you know, this is cool, but what if we put the the ramp on a hill and jumped higher? What if like, we those kind of things. go even further beyond? What if we yeah. re-recorded the bike Odyssey video on a modern camera? 
yeah. let's make it happen oh, john let's, let's do it that, <laughs> i uh, i'll have to call the the guy the guy that was uh that was my partner in, in the project I in see, sixth grade I see. excuses excuses <laughs> But no, that, that's, you know, it's always been my personality is to just, uh, my, I'm trying, my wife, I, there's like a phrase, like a term called Kaizen, which is like this Japanese thing, essentially about always improving, mm -hmm. always making something more efficient. And, and I just see that as like, oh, we've done something really cool. Well, what about, what if we tried to do this to make this work better and stuff like that? And, um, that's who I am. Listen, in almost every aspect of my life, it's. It's very better bikes, much nothing better is. ramps, better hills, <laughs> better cameras. Yeah. <laughs> Never real, stop real, improving. Real lotus eaters, all the stuff. It's, it's true. Great. It's true. We get, we actually got Homer back from the grave to uh, make sure we're doing this as accurately to his story as possible. Yeah. We have great source material, so <laughs> it's going to be, the bikes are really going to tell the story. We've got uh, we've got Homer here. Here's some behind the scenes footage. Yeah, it's great. It, it, it did they did a pretty good job. Uh, fantastic modern interpretation. Constantly getting, constantly improving is is the idea though. <laughs> yeah, uh, constantly improving, but also just always seeing something and being like, just kind of. Uh, I explained it as like there's another artist that is like a video dude that I like, mm -hmm. and I just you just when you watch his videos, you can just see his wheels turning. Where it's just like. This is cool, but what if we did this? And that's that's just how I've always been. I think everything from Legos to sixth grade BMX stunt show naturally. <laughs> naturally, I think um, I think the obvious will to create is probably the most entertaining aspect of watching someone that creates. So, but when I say that, I mean I don't want to watch a YouTube video of someone talking about. Let's uh, let's say they've made a video essay on the Beatles or something. I don't mm -hmm. want to watch this video if they clearly don't care about the Beatles. If they clearly right, don't care yeah. about what they're doing. I want to watch a video essay on the Beatles from someone that really likes the Beatles, some, from someone that is passionate about the topic they're talking about. I Content that is made by someone that really, really cares about the content and it's obvious is the best content music made yeah. by someone that enjoys what they're doing movies filmed by people that that like the story they're telling books written by people that actually like the story they're writing down things like that if you don't care about what you're making you're not going to make something good which is it yeah. sounds a little bit harsh but it, it's very very true don't make things if you don't care about the things i'm a philosopher yeah. in the making i'm gonna write that down <laughs> don't make things if you don't care about the things that is it's words to live by that's, yeah it's perfect yeah it really is it's words to live by absolutely <laughs> but it's true man like the that that kind of stuff that excitement comes through somehow trends translates and transcends into the project it's it's really true whenever you care about something if you are thinking too much about making it obvious you care about something you might not care about it as much as you think you do <laughs> that's true because it, when you really care about what you're doing it's obvious you know yeah yeah that's true man that's very true so i think once again i think me and rat lover sorry rat lover and i for you grammar heads, <laughs> um i think we talked about something similar it all comes full circle that's one of the main themes of this show we like repeating ourselves on this show <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, think the, I do think maybe it is an important theme that's good, like pops up though, not just within you know your show, but like we're surrounded by like. Actually, I copyrighted the theme, so only we, <laughs> only I can talk about it, and only on my show. Perfect. Oh, uh, that's perfect, man. You're gonna get talking gonna be about great, artistic though. integrity, and then I talk about copywriting a, a subject of conversation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but we are surrounded by so much content of that is just people putting it making noise essentially and like i said it's, it's people there's an, a massive influx of people wanting to create not for the sake of creating <laughs> but to be known as someone that creates and that's not the right exactly. reason to do it that is absolutely not yeah. the right reason yeah and so that that theme i think will come will, will start to appear more and more the theme of me getting angry at youtube <laughs> yeah 
YouTube, man, that's a whole other. That's a whole that out. That's a whole other world. <laughs> man, it's it's a mess. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that's. I feel like that. I I, I love YouTube. By the way, I, I'm a I'm a huge fan of YouTube. And, a YouTube head, as a yeah, as maybe. Aaron, but saying. at the same time, I do feel like it doesn't know me anymore. So I, I like you've drifted apart. It's that. been a while. Yeah, you just you grew in two separate directions. <laughs> the spark isn't it's there anymore. Weird. The um, spark isn't there. But don't worry, I'm sure if YouTube could talk, you would say, or they would say, it would say, it's not you, it's them. So don't worry about it's, it. It's, um, it's not you, but here's a video about it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to write that down. That's a good joke. Thank you. I'm going to steal that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Please do. So uh, let's, uh, let's move away from the music discussion all my questions so far have been music related and as you said before you are a husband father soccer lover gamer we already talked about the gaming part so we don't got to worry about that um do you have any potential creative endeavors you'd like to pursue other than music like with uh, your youtube channel or or any other forms yes. of content uh, yeah, I do, and uh, but I'm not sure it'll always somehow revolve around music. I think, right? Um, but I again, I love uh, like YouTube. I think is amazing, and I I remember watching Casey Neistat do like some of his vlogs, and I just remember being like, I can do that. Like I could do stuff like That's that. That's how it all begins. And that's, you know, and so I bought a camera and then I started making videos and, and that turned into me making music videos for myself. And, and I still have very, uh, I still have intentions and, and a desire to, to work more with YouTube video, like we're telling my story through YouTube, but I'm not sure where that falls at the moment and, right. and I'd how to make it work, but I've got ideas that I'm trying to just sort of do instead of think about. Um, but so yeah, I like YouTube. I think YouTube's really cool. Uh, it can be really cool. Um, the the idea is cool. I, I think um, one of the things that I've gotten into oddly is 3D printing, and okay. um, that was the, something I picked up just during the over the last year of the pandemic. I, I wanted I've always wanted to do it, so I just finally bought like a cheap like Ender V2 or whatever, mm -hmm. and uh, Ender 3 V2 or whatever. And then uh, there's there's I have some ideas about what can what can I make with these printers? I've ordered a resin printer too now. I'm like, I'm in for it. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but like, what can I do with these, these printers that can accompany, that can be an artifact of music somehow? And I, you know, like how can you create something on a printer, a 3d printer that helps tell the story of the song or so those kind of things? Like, yeah, like uh, I'm, I'm, I'm always going to make something, uh, and till till the day I die, <laughs> I will be making um, making videos or music or printing out weird things. And but that's yeah, I love it. I just love to make things, but it always always revolves and always comes back to music. So it's music to, is the center of the universe. It's good to have a center to bounce off from. You know, it's better to yeah. have to have offshoots of the thing you know, the thing you're good at, the thing you're known for, rather than being a jack of all trades, master of none. Right. Yeah. So that, that, there's would, absolutely I, nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I know. And I think that's, you know, as far as the, the creative endeavors, like, I think that's, yeah. I mean, literally everything, what all, it does, again, you know, just the, the center, of, the sun is the music. So it's like, it always comes back to that. And that's right. like, but really fun because it, it, it helps me expand how I make things and think about things and create and solve creative problems. And, um, right. Yeah. Well, um, so yeah, I, I, I do, but it's going to be back to music. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Uh, f as far as, you know, kind of kickstarting the less music related, um, or the less directly music related projects, might I suggest with starting off maybe being a guest on some small, a web series slash podcast thing that a small less than 1000 subscriber YouTube channel is doing. May, might I suggest starting off with that? I think that's a good that, idea. You should do that. I will. Um, I will get my people to think about it. 
Uh, I have no people. No, I love this <laughs> man. <laughs> uh, well, so that kind of leads into into my next question, which is: Do you do you have any projects in the works at the moment? Not just non music stuff, but you know, new music or or any other kinds of like social media you're considering branching out onto? Because I know you've uh, you've made attempts at least to branch off into diff many different kinds of social media you know you've talked in your discord server mm -hmm. about about your disdain for tiktok which by the way i completely <laughs> respect um cannot stand it cannot stand it yeah i, I want to like it i really do but every time i download it i go i can't this is this it's, is for high schoolers and i'm that's great for people that's great for people who love it i just it's just not for me so, it's not yeah. it's not for it's not for anyone with long attention spans <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's true it's it, pretty it's, addicting it's yeah. bizarre addicting. bizarre short form content it seems like it destroys your attention span and i used to i ever i i won't lie i'm no saint i'm not perfect i know all the pictures and panavision <laughs> heads are devastated by this news i like to maybe at you know before i go to bed at night i'll sit on, on my phone watching youtube shorts most of which for some reason are like family guy funny moment compilations i don't get it i i <laughs> short form content has its place but i'm not sure how i feel about a platform that is dedicated only to short form content yeah like, like TikTok. yeah i i can't i can't even i can't i can't get my i mean i can get my head around it but i don't see you can't get your head I, around I, it I, you just don't want to <laughs> I, yeah, I don't see like me as a person putting effort into that. Like, I don't see much value in that for right. for me. Um, and also, like, that's such a, a it's like there's no room for nuance and subtlety and, and storytelling not. with with TikTok. It's you gotta have you gotta be shirtless and be a bro, and then throw a basketball off of a bridge into a bas into a hoop. Like that's kind of like what it I helps to. Couple. You're describing like frat culture, so it must uh, it must help to be a big fan of like Dave Matthews. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I, had, I had a dream about Dave Matthews the other night. It was weird, man. I'm uh, telling you, it's like that. Uh, <laughs> do care to explain? Uh, I, no, I as much as I as as much as the joke I just made might make it seem like I don't like Dave Matthews, I actually do. So. Uh, this is the Dave Matthews show now. We talk about our Dave yeah, Matthews did. related dreams. Only only the bootlegs that that were from from 98 to 2001 though. Those that's all we can you Naturally, know, like naturally. The, the, the glory eras. But that I know it was uh, I started this is this, I'm starting to have like really random dreams and a part of it is because um, like you I used I used to sit in bed and like watch YouTube videos and stuff. Um, and then one night I just got really tired and I put on like a, like a really nice ambient record and I fell asleep and I woke up the next morning and I was like, why do I feel rested? And I haven't looked at my screen since. And <laughs> I've been a, like, my, like in the, in bed, like I've read like my Kindle, but like, that's like a different kind of light. Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> and like, I, and like, so I'm sleeping much better now and I'm actually like getting to places where I have dreams. And like the other night I was literally trying to figure out when dave matthews was playing in portland and i was scroll like i could just remember like vividly scrolling on his website and there was like no tour dates and i was like what is this what's going right. on that's that's the end of the dream it's sadly um, oh that's the dream every, every, <laughs> yeah sadly everyone kept their clothes on so <laughs> i uh, when you when you mentioned putting on like a a record before bed i thought you were gonna say that one day you put on under the table and dreaming before you went yeah. to bed and then you had a dave matthews related dream out there for its no man this just came out of nowhere so oh, <laughs> like man. the deep subconscious dave matthews uh but i will say that i think live at luther college the subconscious that, one, that dave tim matthews. and the record that he and tim reynolds did the live one i think is awesome like he's he puts a, them to it at the college thing it's so cool he's a he's a very talented guy his shows are awesome i i still remember seeing now i i wasn't there in person but there's a video of him on youtube doing ants marching you know his biggest song naturally at uh i think it's piedmont park i can't remember exactly yeah i can't remember what state that's atlanta atlanta no, yeah atlanta yeah and uh 
it's an awesome show. He did like a full nine minute rendition of the song and it's crazy. You can tell how much everyone is enjoying playing that song on stage. You can tell how much talent everyone has. Their drummer, I don't their know his name off the same. top of, off, I don't know his name off the top of my head, but just in that video, their drummer, he makes it look easy. And I, yeah. I've been learning how to play the drums. I think I'm kind of okay at it. That guy just blows me away. Um, yeah. and that, it all comes full circle. You know, the show was better because they cared about the song they were playing. It all comes full circle. It all comes full circle. Uh, that drummer's name, by the way, is Carter Beaufort. And That's he it. is, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, he's ambidextric. So ambidext whatever that word is, yeah. I can't say it, but like he both his hands really well. Uh, yeah, I'd imagine that helps. That helps. Oh yeah. Uh, but yeah, he's an amazing drummer. It's, and but that, yeah, that's, you know, that's whatever. That's my, that my dream was disappointing. I'm sorry. That's uh, <laughs> that's the end of the Dave Matthews section of the very good show. Uh, moving on yes. now. Um, <laughs> moving the, on to fish. The, <laughs> the, the, the last question I have for you is we're nearing, we just crossed over the 51 minute mark. Uh, so I think it's a, a, a good moment to, to sort of, to sort of wind down a good time to wind down. I want, I, I'm aiming for each episode to be about an hour long in case it's not obvious. Obvious. Yeah. Obvious. I cannot <laughs> speak. Oh uh, man, that's what that's, that's what okay. I get for for like chuckling internally at your pronunciation of ambidextrous. <laughs> yeah. And I forget how to say the word obvious. That hurts. <laughs> but uh the last question I had for you was specifically in regards to music. Uh, do you have any more music uh, planned? Any any new songs written? Any any music projects coming out in the near future? Anything you're working on? Yes, yes, and yes. There's um, a lot. There's kind of more happening than I, I anticipated. Mm -hmm. There's um, we I've been working on the follow up, the Fort Atlantic uh, Shadow Shaker Volume Two. I've been working on that for years, um, and it's I would say it's uh, I'll say be generous and say it's like you know. I'll, I'll undersell it. It's like 50% done. Okay. Um, but, but the problem is, I, you know, a month ago, I've been working on these songs. And then a month ago, I, I just picked up my guitar and I started writing. Right. And all these songs have come out that are not Ford Atlantic songs. And um, so I'm sitting on kind of another bed of music trying to figure out like, that I know I'm going to record and release, but I'm not sure how and what capacity and what it's going to be called. But so yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm just like, knee deep in songwriting now uh and for this project i've put i've put the ford atlantic stuff just on pause for a minute because right you just sort of you just sort of have to chase what's happening yeah, sometimes and this the, um, the john black solo uh solo career arc about to happen well that maybe <laughs> but i think that's i had like i started as a songwriter in the south and played for so many years and that was like as just the songwriter just as john black but then that's when Ford Atlantic happened because I was tired of doing that. And now 10 years later, you're back I did to that doing it. <laughs> and then I did Ford Atlantic for 10 years. And now here I am writing a bunch of songs that feel like a songwriter project, but it won't be John black. We've, I've already like my main collaborator, Evan plays drums uh, in Ford Atlantic, but he's such a talented musician. And mm -hmm. I, I was talking to him about it. Cause I was like, man, I, I'm just, I was like, what do you think about this idea of these songs that I'm writing? And he's like, Oh, he goes, I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want you to feel like I was like bailing on Ford Atlantic, but I really think we should pursue this right now. <laughs> and I was like, okay, good. But um, so yeah, God's so he, he's going to be kind of a, yeah, he's going to be a part of it with me and we're okay. just going to make something. But yeah, so it's going to be different, but yeah, I'm just going to continue to make Ford Atlantic 2, Electric Boogaloo, yeah. perhaps. <laughs> exactly. Finally. The, it's the, the, the long-awaited sequel. sequel. It's like the the what was it the uh, twin peaks show that came back out you know <laughs> port atlantic the return yeah <laughs> but yeah so that's happening and then um i'm constantly playing with cameras and you know i just did a big trip to montana for vacation with my family and mm -hmm. i recorded like i tried to record 30 30 to 60 seconds a day and i'm gonna like piece that together and see what it looks like and it may never see the light of day at night. I don't know, but that that's, you know, I'm just always going to tinker with something. Right. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it right now. Mainly we're writing and I'm sure some video stuff will come eventually. Eventually. Uh, eventually. But yeah, my main priority right now is just kind of seeing where these songs, this idea goes. Right. 
and that's that's just the creative process to an extent i think and it it's, a, it's, it's a neat thing it's, it's a neat concept too at times you know like you just want to like i just want to be like okay i'm going to do this and then finish it but sometimes you start to do that and then the next thing you know you're having dreams about dave matthews <laughs> and you kind of <laughs> it all comes but full that, circle it really does the recurring theme um, of this show cycles yeah. and dave matthews <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, man yes but yeah so you just sort of have to chase what's happening i can't i'm not gonna i don't want to force anything so i'm I just sitting it, with it. an acoustic guitar most of the days and, and a pad just seeing what happens it's, re it's really been lovely it's been a good season a good season it's been a very good season just like how it's been a very good show Oh, perfect. And, and the, the audience goes crazy. All right. <laughs> well, we just crossed. We're about to hit the 56 minute mark. I think this is a. Uh, I think that was a good moment to, to finish off on. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much f to the guest, uh, my man, John Black of Ford Atlantic. It's been. Uh, it's been two things. One, it's been kind of a struggle restraining my fanboyisms here. And two, it's <laughs> been a genuine honor having you on the show. Thank you so much for, for coming on. Thank you for the lovely conversation and your insights on the various bizarre topics we talked about. Everything from creation of art to uh, Dave Matthews dreams. Um, <laughs> it, it's, it's been a pleasure. It really has. No, man, I've loved it. Thank you for inviting me and wanting course, to have a conversation. It's been awesome. I've, you know, I uh, hopefully maybe I can come back again in the future. At some point, perhaps, perhaps we'll we'll do the actual Ford Atlantic 2 Electric Boogaloo episode. It'll be fantastic. <laughs> and then we're not going to release it, and it'll be the ultimate, ultimate lost media. The ultimate lost. Ooh, I get to have my own lost media? Yeah, man, let's do it. Awesome, awesome. Then I can make a video about it. A million views. <laughs> Easy. Uh, it's so meta perfect <laughs> it's perfect it's absolutely perfect well once again everyone thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed listening to us talk about random things as much as uh, i enjoyed talking about random things um stay tuned for episode three featuring another creator i think you guys might be uh at least just as familiar with as you were rat lobber uh, again thank you so much for watching and i'm not good at outros so this is the part where my vocals fade out. Thank you.